Everyone knows that in Google Sheets you can co-author, edit a document at the same time, but not many people know some of the other ways you can collaborate. For example, you can restrict who can edit certain parts of the spreadsheets. You can get notifications for whether someone edits a spreadsheet. There's a lot of other tricks that I'm gonna cover in this video. So let's get started. My name is David Benheim and I have a video channel on YouTube where I publish loads of things on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, and all business applications that you tend to use in your office. Another feature that I love is the fact that you can right click on any cell and choose show edit history. This gives you a cell by cell history of who is edited, when they've edited, and what they've replaced from and to. It looks at changes in formulas and data. It doesn't look at formatting, but this is just really, really awesome. Look at how it is able to record who made that change and when they made it. If you go to another sort of example like this one here, uh, if I go back to different lessons there, this is a publicly shared file as I showed earlier. So it shows an anonymous user as someone who is editing it uh, when they're not signed in. It's a little bit uh, different to just going back in the file and then version history. So we can go back to another time and see how the file looked at that time. Depending on whether you're using a paid or a free account, then you get different restrictions as to how many versions you can store. But it does still go back. For example, here I have one from 2018 with my free Google Drive account. And if you want with any version, you can restore the current version or you can just make a copy and then edit that one. You might be able to rename it, for example, the pre-manager review to know what that meant and how significant it was. So yeah, that's how you can look at edit history in Google Sheets. Another important feature when you are collaborating is how to work with filters. So the default filter behavior is not really desirable because if I add a filter here, and let's say that I filter only these for ticked, then the other person has their work interrupted because someone is filtered. So that's not really what we want, and that's why you get this feature called filter views. So for example, if I don't want that to happen, I'm going to first unfilter it, which does it on the other side, and then here I can press create new filter view. Then I get this black outline around here, and now it's a different behavior. So now, if I filter there, this other person does not have that. And this other person can then create a new filter view and filter in a, in a different way. So this is a way that everyone can do their own filters without it affecting the other person. You have other things you can do. For example, this filter, you can sort of save it. So this is de-ticked like that change the range it applies to, and then it's sort of in this thing here. So D ticked is the one I just created. So I have another video that I'll link to where I go into more detail about these filter views, but it is a really good option when you are using this. Note the filter views can also take sort options as well as filter options. Another thing about filter views is if you are Another really useful feature is being able to protect certain ranges in cells or even an entire sheet. So I can select this, for example, and I can go to the data tab and choose protected sheets and ranges. And then I can give it a name, so locked. And then I could say restrict who can edit it. And I will say it's only me, it's only David, press done and then it will show up here along with my others. Now, this other person, and this is who I'm viewing it as, if I click in this cell, he cannot edit it and he gets that notification. If I chose the other setting, he would only get notified, but he can still edit it. Notice how almost everything is grayed out. 
he can create a comment or he can create a chart or a picture because those are floating objects above it rather than things in the cell. You could also protect an entire sheet in the same way. Now, what is interesting is how this interacts with filters. So if you are here and you add a normal filter, it will tell you that they can't do it. And that is because the table, what would be filtered includes what they cannot see. However, you can click here and choose create a new temporary filter view. And this is what we showed before, which is the filter views. They cannot rename them or uh, make other edits, but they can choose to view different things like that. So they are able to do that and notice again how that hasn't influenced the filter over here on this side. Most Google Sheets users are probably very, very familiar with the comments thing. It's a really, really good feature. You can right click and choose to insert a comment. There's a shortcut there as well. And then you can say, hi, how is this? You can also at mention people. And then you can choose whether or not to assign it to them. There's a very, very little difference between whether you tick this or not tick this. Uh, in fact, if you tick it, then they are what Google Sheets called assigned it. If you don't tick it, then they just get notified it. But it really makes very, very little difference. Uh, the email wording is slightly different, but in general, it's the same. And the other difference is in the raw sort of Google Sheets here. They see this icon where they have been tagged there. Uh, and if they haven't been tagged, then they don't see it. That's broadly the difference between those two. The other person can then go into the comment and see them in a few different ways. So they can click on this to see all the comments and they can reply. They can also mark as done. And you also see this showing you how many comments there are on each page. Annoyingly, if you choose mark as done, it takes it off here, but it still loads it up there. So uh, unfortunately, there's no way to see just the open comments, which would be quite a nice interaction because I've worked with spreadsheets that people love this feature in. So they have comments, maybe hundreds of them and being able to toggle the open ones is not such a good user experience, I think. You also have this, you can chat to the person who is in this spreadsheet. So if two people are in it at the same time, you can chat. And then I can show the chat over here. That means they got a notification so they can just chat back and forth about what's going on there. Another feature that you can do is you can go to the tools tab and you can choose notification rules. This is very useful when you have a lot of collaborators. Maybe it's a public link. You just want to know who's doing what. You can notify me when any changes are made and you can get either a daily digest or a right away email. So daily digest is good if you don't want to be overwhelmed. But if you're in the last minute of submitting a huge file before you finalize it, then maybe right away could be good. So I can set that up. Unfortunately, Google Sheets downgraded this experience. So you used to be able to do it only for a specific range, only for a specific sheet. Now it only allows you to do it by file. And the other thing to note is that you can't subscribe someone else to it, only yourself. So if there is multiple people subscribing to it, then you would see it in tools and notification rules. You would see multiple things here including the other person as well. But with this experience, you can only assign yourself. So uh, it's a really cool feature. Um, you can do it and edit it there. You can also have a user submit a form, like I said, that's only relevant if you have a link to Google Forms. But that's a pretty good feature there as well. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I have tons more content that I release all the time about Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Excel, 
Zoom, Teams, all sorts of software applications that you're using in a business context. See you next time.